Hello everyone, Max here and today we're going to be talking about GIMP a little bit. So this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy tutorial. It's going to be all about uh, bears and what we want to do basically is we want to create an image with, uh, we want to create a canvas and put a bunch of images in it and make it look good, almost like a newsletter type of a thing that we could send out. So to get started, you go up here to File and click New and 640 is good with um, but usually uh, emails are more portrait so we'll give it a height of 1450 you know a width of 640 so then that way it's taller than it is long we call that portrait and when I click OK you'll see we have kind of a portrait thing coming out here now this is kind of huge so I'm going to uh, do it again I'm going to hit select new uh, instead of 640 maybe I'll just go um, 900 okay so this kind of gives me what I'm looking for. Now I have a bunch of pictures here in a folder about bears and um, you know, I took some uh, good uh, trail cam shots but I want to put uh, several pictures in one graphic and uh, maybe give it a title or so, or whatnot. So I'm going to start with the title actually. I'm going to hit um, the letter A and that will prompt me. Now I'll have a uh, somewhere where I could type. But Let's say that I want to change the font style over here, if I scroll down, I could see that there's a lot of different uh, fonts that I that I can use. So I'm just going to go down here, probably use this uh, uh, Sonic. And here I can adjust the size of the text. I'll put 55 pixels to be the size. And um, I'll just open that, click once on my mouse, and, and type in bears. Okay, now if I want to go back and change the font style or anything, all I have to do is highlight it. I can increase and decrease the size. Maybe we'll go 65. Okay, and uh, you don't want to change the font style here because it doesn't give you that drop down. If you click over here, you'll get that drop down and uh, previews of what the fonts would look like. And uh, so, and, and you could change the fonts like that. So let's go ahead. I like stencils. So we'll use stencil. If uh, you're still having a problem getting it to change, just copy and paste. And so now we have bears. Notice I copied it from here and I pasted it right into here. Okay, and then I can put my arrow in there. And uh, maybe I want the centered. So over here I have my aligning tools. I'm going to align bears right in the center there. Okay, and then I'm going to hit my move tool and I'm just going to take this to the top. Now you notice my layer over here has begun to take place as soon as I uh, clicked in there. So I have bears here. Maybe I want like a, a drop shadow on it. You know, this is something that you can't get a good effect on in uh, um, uh, email programs. So if we go here to filters and we come down here to where it says light and shadow and we put drop shadow, we can have an offset of 4 pixels, offset Y 4 pixels, and a blur radius of 15. We'll have the opacity set at 60 and we'll allow resizing. So we're going to click OK. Now you notice that now I have that drop shadow on there. Okay. It's basically, it adds another layer. So if I wanted it off or on, I can, uh, you know, mess around with it this way if I like. All right. So now it's time to start bringing in the pictures. So I'll bring in uh, picture one here. I'm just actually dragging and dropping it. Now you see how huge that picture is. Now I know that it, we're 640 wide. All right. Now, if I go over here, click on my resize or my scale tool, and I click on the picture, I can see this picture is 2,816. Now, 460 would give me the width of the um, uh, thing, but you notice that it's it's still real tall, it's still 2,000 uh, 2,112 pixels tall. So I'm going to hit link layers like this. Um, let me click cancel here for a second. All right, you want to hit link layers first, and then I'm going to put 450, and you'll notice how it shrinks it down. So then I click scale, and it'll scale that down. And so one of the problems you might have is, okay, well where's my image? Well, if you hit hold your control button down and and roll out on your um, mouse, you can actually see that it's right here. So if I click my move tool and I drag it back in, you can see that. I have my picture, but it's still too big because I want my pictures to go, you know, side by side. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll click on my scale tool again, and instead of uh, 450, maybe I'll take it down to 225. 
and so that will automatically resize it to 225 to 169. Okay, that might be a little bit too small, so maybe I'll go up to 250. All right, well that's looking a little bit more like I want. So now I just got to remember those numbers, 249 by 187. Okay, so when I bring in my other images, I'll be able to put them appropriately. So let me uh, grab the size one more time by clicking on here, 251 by 189. Click cancel. I'm going to bring in uh, my other image. Let me put it right here so you can see. So I'm going down through these images. I'm going to grab this, drag and drop it. Once again, I'll grab my resize tool, hit it, I'll click link layers, and I want it to be 250, just like that. And then I'll hit scale. It's going to scale it down for me. And I'll have to zoom out to see where it's at. And now you see how it's longer than it is wide. Something didn't, I didn't do something right there. So I'm going to hit control Z. And once again, click on control Z will undo everything. And I'm going to, Make sure my link layers is clicked. I must have unclicked it whenever I was showing it to you. So I'll put 250 by 188, and I'll scale that down. I'll grab my move tool and move that back in there. And then scroll in to, you know, bring it up. And then I could start aligning them. Okay. So maybe I'll grab uh, another photo or two here of the bear. Drag this in over here zoom out first click on my tool picture make sure this link layer is together and type in 250 hit scale all right grab my move tool I'm gonna move it down in there and you know while I'm here I'm just going to go ahead and grab another picture of the bear and drag and drop it click on the picture make sure it's 250 scale it down and once again I'll move this into here okay and I'll roll in and zoom everything up if you, if you don't know where that's at if you go to view and then you could pick your zoom on what you want I just use my uh, keyboard to zoom in and out it's a lot easier for me as I'm working on things okay now you notice I have all these different layers over here now because I've been dragging these in but if we hit this little I button, it'll make the uh, certain layers disappear, okay? Like if I didn't want to uh, see certain things, you know? Or if I wanted to lock certain things, I could do that as well. Okay? So every time I want to add another layer, now let's, uh, I would just click this button here. Like if I wanted something uh, that I just wanted to mess around with, you know? Maybe I wanted to uh, start drawing, you know? Like that. I could do that. All right. Um, or if I wanted to erase something. Now, if I wanted to erase something, like erase something in this picture, you'll notice it doesn't work. Okay. That's because I have to have that layer selected. Okay. To make sure that this layer is selected and make sure it's unlocked, you know, I could start erasing certain things in the pictures if I wanted to. Okay. So that's, that's a good thing to know. Um, whenever you want to add a, another layer and put text in the layer, you know, uh, you could do it uh, like this. This is a black bear and Allegheny National Forest. Okay, so you can see where my text is starting to cut off. Basically, all I need to do is take this and drop this down. And, you know, it'll, it'll uh, let the text, because let the text appear because if I keep moving it up like this obviously I'm not giving enough room for the text you know so I have to go inside here and open that up all right um, another thing I'd like to show you is the background so if we uh, you know, scroll this down we're gonna be sending this an email emails usually have a white background but let's say that I wanted a background in this I could actually click on this uh, go to my paint bucket tool right here and I could pick a color like black and fill that in but you'll notice now my text is um, you know, I can't see my text so I can actually uh, go to a gradient tool and take it from the bottom to the top here 
and you'll see what happens. You know, I could start uh, putting my gradient in that way. Basically, to put in a gradient, you take your mouse and you drag and you drop like this. And if you want to change the colors on it, you could change the colors here. You know, you could sample different colors or, or make your own by changing your colors here. Maybe we want red. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and and make it red or something like that. And we have can have a linear, we can have a radial gradient, you know, to where it's going around. Now see my uh, uh, my crop is pretty hard. So if I come here and see where it says hard, it's hard to see right there, but I want it to fade like an RGB or fade it to transparent. Um, so I'm going to fade it to white. Now you can see, you know, I'm starting to get more of uh, what I want in there. And if I want to change that color again, I just go right here and I click OK. And, you know, I can change my colors around. I could also uh, reverse the colors as well, you know, by clicking that little button there and have the, the colors reversed. And I could play around with this as much as I want to until I get it ready. And if I wanted, you know, if I uh, wanted to send it an email, you do it like that so a lot of things when you're trying to move text if you're not right on that text you know you think you might be on that test text but sometimes if you're not right in it you'll see it move in the background and that's kind of irritating what I do is I just zoom in and I make sure that I'm right on the black there so that I can uh, move that move that around okay if you hold control and use the roll button on your mouse that'll zoom you in and out if you hold the alt button down it won't do anything okay all right, so this is uh, just a little uh, tutorial here on, uh, you know, arranging things within uh, a graphic, you know, try to make them, uh, you know, look better. And uh, you can send that in an email and they'll be able to see all four pictures instead of sending all pictures di different. So the final step, you know, after you get it the way that you want it, you go up here, click File and Export As. And if you're going to export into a... Um, uh, you know, for for use in an email, PNG, JPG, or GIF is fine. I'll just call this Bears, just like that. And I'll put it on my desktop here. Click Export. And then here you'll have, you know, Export Images PNG. Usually just all the defaults will be fine. The compression level 9. Click Export. And so let's go to our desktop here and check out our image if we double-click it. Bears that you can see now here we have bears it's ready to send now you could get a lot fancier and putting different things uh, within GIMP but I just wanted to make a quick little tutorial to show you how to arrange things within GIMP like if you're bringing in other graphics okay I'll have another GIMP tutorial for you soon this is Max with A1 Website Pro